So I'm Lieutenant Marisol Rodriguez Velez, and I am the commander for career development. And uh, under career development is not just recruitment, but it's also retention, our PAL program, our school program, and our cadet program. But with regards to recruitment, uh, the basic requirements are that you need to be at least 21 years of age, have a high school or a GED diploma, have a valid driver's license, and be a U.S. citizen. What's unique to our department recruitment-wise is that we provide all candidates with a free written practice exam, okay? The next step in the, in the hiring process is called an oral board. Uh, what's also unique to our department is that we will invite those that pass the written exam the week prior to their oral board and provide them with a free week of mock oral board. So basically we give you tips on how to be successful during the oral board process, which essentially is an interview. We give you, you know, tips on dress and appearance, uh, proper customs and courtesies and things of that, of that sort. Uh, after you pass the oral board, then the next step in the process is the background phase. And the background phase entails a polygraph, a psychological, a uh, criminal history check, a motor vehicle check. It also entails a, uh, a medical evaluation along with a, uh, a chief's interview and they interview your spouse or your significant other or whatever family support system you have. It's, it's called the home visit. It's quite a, a quick process as compared to when I joined 17 years ago, it took a year from the time of application that I submitted my application for me to even get a response that I was invited to the written exam. Um, so once you pass that, then you get an, you have to pass a physical agility. Let me back up a little bit here because I totally forgot to mention that. Um, you need, part of the hiring process is that you need to pass a physical agility and that's according to your age and your gender. What's going on, everybody? So today we are at Weaver High School in Hartford going through some PT with the police department for recruiting. So we're going to do a mile and a half run as well as some other drills, push-ups, sit-ups, a 300-meter dash. We'll see how it all pans out. We'll see how I do. What advice would you have for yourself? Like, if you could look back at it, the 17 you've been on the job, if you could give yourself advice back then that you know now, what would it necessarily be? That it's, it's definitely not an easy process, but nothing that's worth having or, or worth achieving is necessarily easy, right? We don't we don't arrest someone and, and the case, case, case closed in an hour, so that's another misconception. But 95% of this uh, career is report writing. You're writing, you go out to an incident, you, you you know, you handle whatever the incident is, whatever whatever it is, whether you make an arrest or you're just doing community service, and then you gotta go back and you have to write in detail what transpired. So you're painting a picture for either your your peer, your supervisor, if you made an arrest for the prosecutor, if if it goes to court, to trial. So ninety five percent of this job is report writing. So that's a misconception there. We are so low in numbers that we have a, a, a we're constantly recruiting. So we just had an application that closed June tenth, and the next one is due to open by uh, within the next two weeks. So okay. it's a, we're constantly recruiting until we fill our numbers. So for our department, um, we're a young department. What I mean is our our pension changed from a twenty year a retirement to twenty five. So all the twenty year officers. This is the time that they are exiting. They are retiring. So our loan numbers are due to attrition, are due to retirement. Um, and then of course we, you know, the uh, law enforcement right now is not the first career that everybody is looking to apply for. So it's just not in Hartford or in Connecticut, it's across the country. Law enforcement is having a difficult time hiring just like on the military side. I also serve my country. Uh, 18 years now, and we are also facing the same challenges on the on the military side with, with recruitment. So the first drill that they had us doing was push-ups. So obviously depending on your age, there's a set number as well as depending on your gender. So obviously the younger you are, the more you have to do. So for me at 32, my number, or you have to do it within a minute. So you had to get, for me at 32, I had to get 24. So it's like everything else. We have black and brown people and Hispanic and Latinos and all other professions. 
why not in this one? So if you want to be part of the change, you need, if you want change, you need to be a part of the change. And I encourage you, I, in fact, I, I challenge you to, to uh, at least consider a law enforcement career. It's a rewarding career. I mean, look where we're at. We're at a community event. Uh, that's another misconception. I mean, you, you see all the negativity, right? The few that unfortunately the rest of us are viewed upon by the actions of few, like every other profession. But we're, it's not just, you know, arresting uh, criminals, right? We're mentors, we're advisors, we're counselors. Um, you know, we're community service officers, so we do a lot. There's a lot of facets. We have officers that work in the police academy, officers that work in our crime analysis department, and they did all they do are stats and, and, and analysis. So there's a lot of facets to law enforcement, not just patrol. Now, mind you, everyone starts in patrol. Everyone starts in patrol and patrol. I want to say that they are the backbone of the police department, okay? Uh, but we all start in patrol, but there's many different paths. So I encourage you and I challenge you. And we need a lot of people of color, right? Right here, we're in Hartford. Predominantly, we serve brown and uh, brown and black people and Latinos, but the department itself, the majority is Caucasian and, and mostly male. So what we're trying to do is to, one, increase our female numbers, right? So I was talking to one of the other officers and I was curious, how does someone necessarily become a bike cop? No, it's not bike cop. You get you get bike certified, right? So you, as any officer in the department can can go ahead and get um, certified to be able to ride a bike. Um, I'm a community service officer. Um, also, I started as a walk beat. So they provided us with the certification to be able to ride a bike. Um, any officer in the department with uh, maybe a year or two on, they'll be able to qualify to get certified to ride a bike. So it's not, you don't, it's not necessarily a bike unit. We do have bike units, right? In the summertime when we have concerts, events such as this, or uh, like parades and stuff like that, 4th of July events, any event that we have, we'll have bike units that are out on a bike, but you have to be certified. Okay. How long have you been an officer? I'm, go I'm working on five years now. But prior to this, I was a barber. I own my own business and I used to own a food truck. Um, but I was born and raised in the city of Hartford. And in the back of my mind, something was always like, damn, I would love to be a police officer in my city. So the day came, and um, after maybe, when I hit maybe the age of 30, 33, 32, 33, I said, you know what, before it gets too late, I mean, it's never too late, but I said, before I get here later in age, um, I, I want to be able to put this in my bucket list, and I want to be able to provide the services for my for my town, for the city that I was born and raised in. Um, I love the city. I was born here, like I said. Um, I'm Puerto Rican, and um, it just, it's always been in the back of my head, like, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to I just kept the point to the side because I had a family, and um, I had a business, so I was doing well with my business. But then something just clicked in my head. I said, you know what, this is going to be the year. And then um, I, I put in for it, and I got it, and I'm here now. And I'm, I'm, I won't, I don't regret it at all. One thing I would tell, I, I tell myself, I should have done this a long time ago when I was younger. Get out the way, get in here, and well, I would have been already a long time in this doing what I love to do. Okay. From, from, a, from, a, from a younger age, you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I always tell myself, I should have done this sooner. Okay. And I kept on putting it to the side like I did. And the job doesn't make you, you make the job. It doesn't matter what you do in life, you're gonna have good days, you're gonna have bad, bad days. Any Anything you do in life, do it. Don't worry about others say, what the TV says, what your friends say. Because there was friends that I had when I was 20 years old that I don't have now, right? If I would have told they would have told me when I was 20 years old and follow their footsteps, I probably never would have been where I'm at now, right? So friends come and go, but your life doesn't. So do what you want to do and do it immediately. Don't don't hesitate. Don't put it to the side. And no job that you get into in life is going to be easy, right? Anything worth having in life is not easy. You have to work for it and it's not going to come easy. Um, just go for it. Don't, don't hesitate. Don't be scared. And don't listen to what people say. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, it, it's... It's hard nowadays with social media, right? Because everybody exactly. has different opinions, right? And we have the right to opinion and we have the right to say what we want to say. Um, but that, don't let that discourage you. If it's here, in the back of your mind, put it to the front of the mind and go for it. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you. No I appreciate problem. you thank talking you. to me. No problem. Thanks, have man. Thank you. Second drill that you had to do was sit-ups. So again, depending on your gender, depending on your age, a certain number you have to hit. For me, for males, 30 to 33 or 31 to 33 you had to do 35 i didn't get to that 35 i was about 20 off
National Night Out. It's an annual event that occurs throughout the United States, meant to be a community building event between the police departments and the local communities that they serve. It's held annually. It's done both at a local and a federal level. Officer Brian Herman, I'm with the Hartford Police Department. I'm on the Hartford Police Emergency Response Team. So, emergency response team, as most of us would personally probably know it is SWAT. Different organizations call it different things. Uh, DEA, for instance, calls it the SRT, Special Response Team. Uh, different organizations also call it ERT, the Emergency Response Team. And you also have SWAT, which a lot of people know it as. Uh, no real explanation as to why the organizations change, choose different uh, names for that. Okay. But, uh, how long have you been an officer or how long have you been in uh, law enforcement? Uh, approximately nine years now. Uh, been on the Hart Police SWAT team for approximately seven. So initially getting outside of the Marine Corps, I spent about five years in the Marine Corps. Once I got out, I wanted to be able to engage in my community and help out where I could locally. Uh, I did it on a national level where I was leaving the country to do that and it felt really good to do. And I wanted to try and get back to my local community and Hartford is my local community. And I figured that the city itself was the best place where I could have the most outreach. Get out there and be the change that you want it to be. If you think that there's current issues that happen with law enforcement or other things in your community, then what better to do than get involved in those things so that you can make the corrective changes that you need made. Uh, I personally love the, the city of Hartford. Law enforcement was a great opportunity, I think, to really get out there and be that outreach that we possibly could be. Uh, this is a community I think needs it the most. And National Night Out, for instance, as it is today, we're here, is just that. We're trying to bring the community out. We want to show them that there are plenty of organizations organizations within the city of Hartford that are willing to help and uh, we want to see the community get involved and engage in these things and and be the change that they can be. How does someone necessarily become a SWAT member or get into the uh, tactical unit? Great question. So uh, Hartford Police Department currently uh, there's a process where you have to have X amount of years on. When you have those years on and some experience you would uh, apply for that position. If you have military experience or something that is formulated to SWAT uh, they look at that as well. Um, you do a tryout. You do an oral interview. Uh, there's a lengthy process in getting uh, good applicants onto the team. But once you're on the team, uh, there's training at least once a month. And uh, it's good training. It's fun training. It's uh, what I consider the tip of the spear for the, the police department. Okay. You mind showing us what, like, what inside of the trial truck or inside of the actual truck or inside of your unit? Yep. Yeah, definitely. So this is what we call the Bearcat. This is uh, an up-armored vehicle. Um, it serves as a, a vehicle for saving those who might be in, for instance, we recently the, the nation has seen a lot of uh, upticks in gun violence as far as mass shootings. Uh, this is a vehicle that could come in and possibly save casualties and, and transport casualties to a trauma uh, center, somewhere they can help those victims out at that time. Uh, it is up armored. The windows are, are up armored to stop bullet resistance. Uh, run flat tires so that if those were shot, the vehicle would continue. Uh, these act as a place for the SWAT members to be able to stand while they hold handlebars and are able to ride on the outskirts of the vehicle in order to assist in getting them to uh, either rescue locations, search locations, or execute search and seizure warrants. Inside of the vehicle over here, you'll see there's ladders to be able to climb on top of the vehicle. There's more up armored windows inside of the vehicle. We have uh, seating, it's very small and cramped as you could see. There's uh, no real ability for AC or heat, so it uh, leaves the guys back here pretty tired, but. Uh, How many people can you fit into this into this vehicle? Uh, approximately. Fully geared up and everything. Once you start throwing gear on, guys start to get pretty large. So uh, approximately eight to 10 people can sit in here comfortably. Okay, so. With the amount of people inside plus the uh, standing outside holding, how many people yep. in total can you possibly have? Uh, 15 to 20, not including the driver and the, the front seat passenger. Okay. Well, I definitely want to say thank you for talking to us, giving us some insight. Appreciate your feedback, and um, hopefully it's a cool it's a cool vehicle, so I've never <laughs> actually been inside it or never seen the inside of it, so thank definitely you. want to say thank you. Appreciate you coming out for National Night Out. Thanks. Thank you. So we're talking to one of the captains of the Hartford Police Department. How long have you uh, been in law enforcement? Uh, coming up on 20 years, th the end of this year. If you could tell yourself something that you wish you had known 20 years ago when you first started, what would that necessarily be? Maybe it's helpful to 
recruits coming in, people that are interested in law enforcement? That's a great question. I would tell myself to breathe, to relax, to not try to rush it. It's a, it's a marathon, not a race. You know, a lot of rookies come on and they want to move up, they want to promote, they want to go out and, and just save the world in their first month. So, had to do the 300 meter dash. First time was 101. Ran it the second time because I didn't like that score. Because for 32 mils, you got to finish in 59. Second time around, I did 56. Now we got a mile and a half run. Got to finish in 13 and a half. I don't think I've run a mile and a half in 13 and a half in probably a year, a little under a year. The, the meat and potatoes of this job is the radio car, the patrolman, patrol officer. That's what probably 90% of cops in this profession are doing. And then you have your specialized units, your narcotics detectives, you have your SWAT guys, your traffic division, but a bulk of every police department is the radio cars, cops coming to your door when you call 911. That's the vast majority of this job. It's not easy. This is still probably one of the hardest professions in the world, but I'm telling you it's the most rewarding profession in the world. Uh, you deal with people at their worst, you deal with people at their best, you make connections that last a lifetime. Uh, the pros still outweigh the cons. Okay. Got the opportunity to talk to the Mayor Hartford. Wanted to get some insight and get his thoughts on the Hartford Police Department, what's going on in the community, whether it's community policing, what we can do to improve the relationships between, obviously, the police department and the communities, because being that, like any large city, there's issues. I appreciate it. Well, first of all, we're out here on National Night Out, which is all about building that relationship of trust between law enforcement and community. And we got a lot of partnerships that are, are really critical to our police people being able to do their work, you know, whether it's with Mothers United Against Violence or Harper Communities of Care or Compass Peace Builders. And tonight it's about celebrating those partnerships. But, you know, I, I feel I feel really lucky that I get to work with those community partners and with the HPD. You know, I think we've got a department that works really hard to try to build those partnerships and uh, and and try to just be transparent takes accountability seriously and also it does the work you know they, they uh, they've been working really really hard uh, to take illegal guns off the street to make sure that when there is violence in our community that those who are involved in perpetrating that violence are are brought to justice so there's closures for the victim and for families and, and people know that you can't do that in our community without consequence uh, but also are just focused on being out there being a presence and uh, and and building relationships and you know like any city like any department we always got work to do uh, but we're committed to doing that work and I appreciate the fact that we got a, our officers, you know, men and women uh, of, of this department out here tonight and on a lot of nights trying to do that work. I can't talk to you from the perspective of a law enforcement officer because I'm not a law enforcement officer. What I can tell you is, you know, it is a really hard job. But if you have that spirit of service and you want to help build a safer community, and if you want to help strengthen that relationship between the police department and your community, which is so vital to a, a strong and healthy and safe community, then we want you to be a part of that. And we hope that you'll sign up. We're actively recruiting. Well, thank you, Mayor. I definitely appreciate it. All right, thank you. I stand corrected. Males 32, or it's males 30 through 39, mile and a half. You got to finish in 1304. I was 26 seconds off. I didn't. 1330 like I thought it was originally but all the same came out here did all the drills that the um, Recruits do so we'll definitely try to improve on time Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the video Thank you to the Hartford Police Department for allowing me to feature their profession and going through their recruitment process Subscribe as we have more professions and careers coming up Hopefully we'll also get to check out some of those other specialized units in the actual department such as the K-9 unit those that work in maybe narcotics, talk to a police dispatcher.